you're into speed boats and want to learn how to do it, then this boat is great for what it is. So now I'm going to cut into those tight turns. This is full throttle. And you can make like a little, we're making little whirlpools in the middle. Welcome back to Motion RC Hobbyists. I'm James, and today we're talking about our newest uh, speedboat coming from our new in house brand, Bancroft. It's a line of warships, sailboats, uh, speedboats, and civilian boats. Uh, link in the description to everything we got here. But today we're talking about our larger swordfish. This is the Deep V in the yellow version. And in the box beside me, we do have the red version, which uh, in this video we're going to go through an unboxing and show you just how simple uh, these ready to run boats are to assemble. What you see before you is everything that comes in the box whether you get the yellow version or the red version and um, as you can see it's pretty straightforward stuff if you're a beginner to boats something like this is perfect for you ready to run um, in all lines of RC if you're a beginner ready to run usually means you get everything in the box to go out and play um, as soon as possible as soon as you get it assembled and ready to go so what that usually means is you get yourself a transmitter like we have here uh, that's what's going to control your uh, your boat everything inside is already going to be bound up we'll get in there in a second you do get a battery this one is running on a 2800 three cell powered admiral battery with an xt60 connector that's what comes uh, in the box you do get a charger so this plugs into the wall you plug your charger in and then this will ch uh, charge whether a 3s or a 2s actually so if you have 2s batteries you can use this as well and this uh, charges through the balance tap so you plug the balance tap into that side and uh, plug this into your wall and then you have three lights on top and that'll let you know when it's charging they'll be red and uh, when it's green it'll be uh, ready to go it'll be all charged up inside you do get an instruction manual and then the only assembly you really have to do on this is this little um, slip that goes over the antenna little waterproof seal if you will um, that's that's the only thing you got to place in and they give you a bind plug just in case you ever lose bind between your transmitter and the receiver inside uh, you'll be able to bind it back up with the uh, included bind plug and we'll show you where that goes in a second but taking a look at the sword fish let's talk about the specs so now the specs the length of this baby is 26 and a half inches uh, from the center line and the beam or the width is going to be seven inches so that's 180 millimeters and then the center line for uh our eu guys that's 675 millimeters long its height is five and uh 5.1 inches or 131 millimeters the hull material is ABS plastic and it's painted or coated really nice and shiny. The, uh, the decals come out of the box as you see them already pre-applied. As we said, the battery is going to be a 3-cell 2800. You can use different 3-cell packs if you have them, though. Uh, a lot of things are going to fit inside of here as long as you got that XT60 connector. The motor is a brushless motor inside. The propeller is plastic, but as you can see, all the uh, the back parts of it is all metal. So you got a metal rudder, you got metal uh, stabilizers, and uh, you know a lot of metal parts included uh, inside, which is nice. Is what a lot of people want in the uh, larger boats for the price you pay on this. It's great. ESC is a 40 amp splash proof, and as you'll see inside when we get into it, it is uh, it is nice and cooled with the tubing in there and the receiver. As you'd expect with uh, most speedboats, it's just two channels. Channels, one for steering and one for throttle. So now taking a look inside guys, let's open the hatch. So what I do like about this one as opposed to the smaller version is this is a screw, an entirely screw metal uh, piece to get in there to make sure you're going to get that watertight seal. And when you take it off, you can see they got the, uh, the ceiling all throughout. So no water should get inside of your boat, at least through the uh, canopy which is fantastic. And then inside you can see everything is uh, installed as you'd expect it to be with the boat. Um, you do have your silicon everywhere. There would have been a hole, you know, to keep, to make sure uh, that no water gets inside. And then you have your tubes, which are gonna cool your motor into the ESC, which is nice, all your tubing. And it goes back again, there's a hole on the back here and then an exit uh, out the other side. So that keeps everything nice and cool. You got a big servo inside for your steering with a nice metal arm. It's a big solid uh, servo. 
You actually have a four channel receiver inside. You can see it's a Bancroft, but uh, you do have your bind plug, which would be the port in the front if you ever need to rebind it. And then you do get two auxiliary channels. So I don't know what you use them for, but you have a chance. If you, I don't know, you wanna put a light on it or something. You have uh, the option to do that, but your throttle and your steering already plugged into where they go. And then you see a nice foam uh, slip, non-slip cover down here for your battery with a Velcro strap that's gonna keep your battery tucked into place. So I say, let's, uh, let's get the transmitter going. The only thing you're gonna need for your transmitter is gonna be four AA batteries, and I have them in my pocket along with some garbage from the unboxing. But uh, all you do with your transmitter, on the bottom, there's a little pull tab, pull it open, and then you're gonna drop your batteries in. Does it tell you which way they go? It does not, but going by how they mostly go, you want the little springy on the uh, the negative side. So we'll put the positive sides up in the back and we're gonna put the negative sides down in the forward part. Close the top, lock that in and let's turn it on. And you can see that I have a red light. So that means it works. So that's the way it plugs in. Now walking around the transmitter quick, you can see you got your, uh, you know, your throttle gun, so you're gonna have the ability to reverse, pushing forward, or pulling back is gonna give you throttle, and you're steering, so left and right, uh, when you steer, and then on the top, or we'll start with the sides, you can reverse either channel, so depending on, you'll, you'll see, you want your steering to go the right way, you could always just flip that switch, neutral to reverse, or your throttle, if for some reason that is reversed, you know, if, if pushing forward here makes it go forward, you're gonna wanna reverse that because you wanna pull the trigger like a gun to uh, go forward. So that's where you'd reverse that. And then on top, you got four, four knobs and you can see you got your trim. So the ST goes for steering. So these two knobs are gonna go for your steering and these two knobs are gonna go for your throttle. So this is where you go if you wanna trim your steering, if you want a little more left for it to go straight if it needs that or a little more right. And again, you could always mechanically change the servo arm inside, uh, but a lot of people just play with the trim on the transmitter. And then you have dual rates. So you could actually change the max or minimum throw on your steering or on your throttle. So if you don't want your, uh, let's say you let's say you don't want your, uh, your boat to steer violently, you could always bring down the rate. So we'll show you that when we plug it in, but that's gonna allow when you max turn either way, the uh, the rudder's not going to go the full length of travel of the servo, which is nice. So if you're just beginning out, you could start with a lower uh, rate on here and then work your way to a more violent you know, rate if you want to get crazy with it. And then same with the uh, throttle. Maybe you don't want it to go full, you know, it's a speedboat. I'm sure you want it to go full full speed, but if you didn't want to at the start, you could bring down your rate and you're probably, your throttle's not going to go as far which is nice, and again, you have your throttle trim. So you wanna make sure the second you pull down on this stick, um, on the throttle stick, that the motor starts turning immediately. If it doesn't, you play with the throttle trim to make sure you got full trim on your throttle. And that's pretty much it for the transmitter. Now, as it goes with, with a boat, for this one, this boat does not have an on and off switch like the little one does. So the second you plug in your LiPo into the boat, it's gonna be ready to go. So when you do that, you wanna make sure your transmitter is on uh, before. And when you unplug your uh, boat, make sure you leave your transmitter on. The transmitter is always the first thing on and the last thing off uh, when it comes to playing with RC. You never wanna have your model, any type of model plugged in and on without being linked to your transmitter because crazy things could happen. It could start up, you could hurt yourself. Remember this prop, even though it's plastic and small, if your finger's back there and this is moving, you're gonna, you're gonna cut yourself, so you don't wanna do that. So let me get the battery in. What I would do with this is I'm gonna put the battery dead center on the inside and then strap it down. So there we go. And now with that non-slip cover, what I like, that non-slip cover, I, I could push on it pretty good and it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere, which is nice. So that's gonna be uh, probably how I'll end up mounting this. But you see we got the, uh, the lead from the ESC here. Now my transmitter is already on. Now I'll see if it's bound. It should be bound up already out of the box. But if it's not, we could show you how to bind it up. Let's get it plugged in. And there 
there you go. Now I'm going to just turn my rudder. Let's see. There we go. So now you can see the rudder's working on the steering. And if I hit the throttle a little bit, I goose the throttle, it's turning the right way. You want to make sure it cuts the rounded part of the prop cuts into the water. So that's how you know if your throttle's going the right way. If it was reversed, if I go on here, I can re hit the reverse channel. When I pull, you see it spins the opposite direction. So you don't want to do that. So you go back to neutral and that's how we know it's correct there. And on your steering right now, I want to make sure, let me look at it from behind. But if I, if I push the wheel up, I would assume I turn right. Up is usually forward is right on these wheels and back is left. So that is correct. But if it's not correct for you, you go into the steering reverse. And when I reverse, then back is turning me right, which is just awkward um, for me. That would be reverse and the other way. So they had it right on the transmitter right out of the box, but always check it, always good to check. Um, you know, do all your testing, like a pre-flight check with RC aircraft, a pre-sail or pre, uh, what would we call that, Alex? A pre-boat check? Voyage. Pre <laughs> before your maiden voyage, a pre-voyage check. But you can see what I do like out here, they got a little rubber, like um, almost looks like a spring, but that's keeping uh, water out from any, you know, any hole, which I, which I do like. That's a, that's a nice little touch on the back there. So now when you're on your, uh, you see I'm on the steering side of the transmitter. So when I move the trim, see how the, uh, the rudder moves. So if I'm in the water and you're driving, you know, for anybody who's never trimmed anything as far as RC, basically what that's going to help you do is make sure your, your craft, your model should always move straight when you're not hitting any of the turn when you're not trying to turn it in any way so when you're not manipulating it when you just hit the throttle it should just drive straight if it's if it's veering off to the left you would add some right trim so you would add a little bit of right rudder if it's veering to the other way you add the other trim so always good baseline to just start at zero you can look down on your rudder that looks pretty straight to me if it wasn't you could always get a little allen key and manipulate it mechanically you just loosen this uh the control rod here and you can move the rudder when your steering is at zero on the trim and that'll mechanically trim it out but you still depending on the wind conditions uh just like an rc aircraft you might always trim your trim your uh boat um you know depending on the scenario of where you're uh where you're going to be taking this whether it's a lake a big pool or you know the ocean <clears throat> then as far as throttle rates oh then as far as dual rates so right now when you get it out, the dual rate's all the way at max on six. So you can see when I turn, that means I'm getting full deflection on the servo each way. So the DR, what that does, if I turn it all the way down to one, what that should mean is I get less deflection. So you see, that's my, that's my rate. So if you want to, so for somebody starting out, if you don't want to make those violent turns, you know, you don't want to go all the way down to one because she's not going to turn around that far, but maybe you started at like, Let's go halfway. So a three is the half of six. And maybe you only want that much uh, deflection. So she'll be a lot more tame as she takes speedy turns rather than being violent like, uh, you know, on this. So even me as a, you know, inexperienced boater, I'll probably start at like a four, get used to it, and then work my way up on the, uh, you know, on the trim. And then with the throttle, the same thing. So the throttle is maxed out. It's a speedboat. You're probably going to want the throttle max out, but say you didn't want when you pull the trigger You don't want it to go a hundred percent throttle. You can bring down the uh, you know the throttle So if I spin it up So I'm spinning it up and I'm bringing the trim down. So now that's a that's a one It's not as fast when I move it up. It starts going a lot faster so uh, if you see that so you're able to again add rates to both the throttle and the steering which is really cool and it's it just an it's ability like a kid mode. yeah like a kid mode right so it's a beginner mode um for you which is nice something that doesn't usually come maybe with um you know a ready to run type of transmitter and then you have your throttle trim so if i start trimming the throttle forward the the throttle will turn on again you want to make sure that the second you move that trigger that the throttle goes and this is already set up well out of the box now i would say i just ran it up on the table here you don't want to be running up your boat on the table uh you'd rather run it in water for the most part because things can get hot inside uh they're made to go in the water so try not to run it up too much um on its own when it's not in the water 
But that'll about do it for everything with the yellow swordfish. So now I'm gonna show you real quick how everything's packaged on the red one. But since we pretty much went through everything here, uh, you know, we're not gonna go through everything that we just did again. Uh, but then we'll just show them both here and just have some last final words on the swordfish. So let's unbox the red one. So it just comes in an old white box. As you see, like everything packaged really well inside. So there's your boat, nice and protected with, uh, with foam everywhere. And all your little bits are gonna be protected nicely, taped down. I think that looks pretty nice. And red, as everybody knows, as Alex said, red is faster. Red is faster than yellow. Sorry, all you yellow fans, but you know, red is always where it's at when it comes to the speed stuff. So let me grab a razor blade and let's start cutting out our boat. So first things first, I'll get out the little box that's gonna have all our accessory bits in it. So there you have that. Then I'm gonna cut out the foam. I'm just cutting the tape on each side. And this one you can just bring out in one shot and then just manipulate the foam over these metal pieces. Now I will say, be very careful going around these stabilizers and the rudder because they are they are pretty sharp. They're not they're not razor blades. You're not cutting yourself by doing that, but if you dig too hard or you get a point, it's going to hurt. You're going to get an ouchie and you don't want that. So let's get that off there. But you see here, swordfish again, everything pretty much assembled. You don't have to do much on them. When you open it, you'll see just like the yellow one, it's exactly as the yellow one was here. So you know that I didn't do anything to it. This is how it comes out of the box, all ready to run, which is awesome. So I'm gonna put this, oh, I'll leave that right there for now. Then, opening up our accessory box, what you're gonna see inside. Again, there's no like building any here, but uh, you got your, your wire for your charger. That's gonna give your charger power. Your charger itself, as you already saw, comes in there. I'll pull out, this is a little boat stand. This is the only thing you have to assemble. And uh, oh, I'll just rip that off, pull it out. It's four pieces of wood, laser cut, and then two little foam bits that we put on and we'll build that in a second for you. Let's see, then you got your battery and it's tucked away in, in plastic bubble wrap. There it is, 2800 with the XC60 connector. And then your transmitter comes all bubble wrapped as well. And the only other little bit of assembly you have is this little slider that's gonna cover the antenna to make it waterproof. So you slide that little stopper, rubber, rubber sleeve, I guess I'd call it. Sleeve is probably the best word for it. Sure, it has a real name, but I don't care what the real name is. I don't antenna know friend. Is. Antenna friend. <laughs> antenna friend sounds like a good word. And inside that little baggie too gives you a, uh, you know, your bind plug. So again, if you lose bind for some reason, you're able to uh, plug that in into your receiver. And then inside, last things last, is your instruction manual. Um, not much to it because again, not much instructions needed. Um, as far as this goes and hoping you watching this video, you got a lot of the answers you already need as far as how the transmitter works and such. But you see, just one page of instructions, ready to go. So next things next, I didn't take the transmitter out. But the transmitter, unlike the mini one, it's a one piece transmitter. So that's there. Now I'm gonna move the swordfish out of the way. Get that out of the way and let's build ourselves quickly the, uh, the stand. So again, as you see, there's a little tape. Uh, it's, it's a foam on one side and then adhesive on the back, but we'll do that second. So first things first, let's get the uh, Let's get the two ends into one end and you just got to manipulate. There's like little teeth on there. So you just got to work it back and forth a little bit. Give it a little, give it a little strength because once it's in, it's not coming back out, which is nice. And then you'll see laser cut piece was left in there, which is fine, but I'll do the other side. Probably make it easier doing it this way. Do one side at a time. There you go. Press that in. And then we'll push this on one side. And I just use the palm, use the palm of your hand and just give it a, give it a nice, my 
last name is Burlich. We call this Burling. We call this Burling thing, so <laughs> if you burl it, that's what we you gotta just sort of drive it in there because it is laser cut to be a super tight fit. There you go. That's not going anywhere. And then your little foam tape. That's gonna protect the hull of your boat when you, you know, when you rest it for display. What I did, I start in the center and then worked my way to the outside. One. And two. And you might want to add a little, you could add a little glue to that if you want to, but for the most part, you know, where's it gonna go? On there, turn the other side around, do the other side. You know, good, good ability to customize if you want to paint your stand, <laughs> make it, you know, if you need it to be matchy matchy. You want a red stand, little Rust Oleum can of spray paint goes a long way. And actually, each side is, is cut differently. I didn't realize that on the yellow one. Maybe I have the yellow one on the wrong way. But you can see there's two notches and four notches on this side. So that probably lines up to the bottom of the boat. Oh, it does. So it sits that way. Look at that. I have the yellow one reversed. So I told you. The four notches <laughs> go the other way, and that'll keep your rudder yeah. off, the, off the water. Ah, there you go. Off the table better than the other. So I just learned something on camera live that I did not know before. Now, lastly, as far as assembly goes, again, we just have a little sleeve, what we call antenna friend. You're just going to slip him over the top of your antenna that's going to help keep it waterproof and then you're going to press down and then what i noticed on the other one is there's a direction because it's a tight fit obviously it has to be because it's it's got to be waterproof <clears throat> so i sort of held it this way grab it at the very base you know you don't want to push from the top or you'll bend it you know you can always manipulate it in other ways but i sort of just worked it around until it slips in there's a there's a direction that it'll go in there it is so once it goes in you can push it as far down as you want but the beauty is you have more length uh coming out so then if you want to go back inside for your transmitter and tape your uh tape the rest of the lead down somewhere else um but you just want to make sure the top of it is way at the top so you get the most range um, on your boat, depending on where you're gonna drive these things around, that's up to you. So now just looking again inside, so we talked about the water, uh, you know, you got the water coming in for your cooling, so you do have an intake and an outtake. So water comes through, gets cooling the whole system inside, which is great. And then some minor things, as we said, if you, if you wanna me mechanically adjust the arm, you're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver on the, uh, on the servo. You could take the servo out very easily, but it's a nice metal plate that holds it down. So that is an Allen key is going to get that out. And then in here, if you wanted to manually adjust the, uh, the rudder, it's just an Allen key in here. You'll loosen that and, uh, you know, you could straighten your rudder to trim it mechanically to get it straight uh, first uh, out of the box. But obviously this is the way it comes out when you plug in. It's probably already centered, but, you know, that's something you're going to see. Make sure your receiver is, is taped down and everything else looks pretty good. They do have a little foam insert inside that's glued down. You do not take that out. That's probably there for a little bit of assurance if your boat starts taking on water and uh, you know it's gonna sink to the bottom. That's probably your last line of keeping, <laughs> keeping it upright before it goes under. That's a last line of defense. But I do like the brushless motor system. Looks really nice. And then if your drive shaft ever loosens for any reason, you would need a wrench to to tighten down this one, and then an Allen key tightens it down to the motor shaft. So uh, that's really the the main you know thing that you want to check. If you if you rev the throttle and you notice your propeller's not moving, that's where you want to look right off the bat because your your prop shaft could be spinning, your motor shaft could be spinning inside of that nut, and that means that Allen key, that little grub screw in there, is not secured or tightened down. So I know a lot of guys probably take that out and then use some. Um, some thread locker, some blue thread locker is perfect in there because it's metal on metal. So uh, you can add that to it if it's not already there. I'm not taking it apart for the purpose of this video, but looks very easy to uh, to replace if you had to to do anything. But as far as inside, you got a lot of room in there to uh, to get what you need. Now this was this way, as we said. There it is. It should line up nice and straight. So 
I'm just gonna drop the battery in here so you can get a view of the two Swordfish Deep Vs in both red, which is infinitely faster than the, than the yellow one. Um, but they look really cool, man. I'm excited to finally have boats available. Uh, this is our line of Bancraft boats, and we want you guys to let us know. Um, in the description of this video, we're gonna have links to the whole collection of all the boats we got. Again, we got warships, we got sailboats, we got other types of speedboats, and we have civilian yachts, things like that. And we're gonna have more on the way, but we also have a link to Hobby Squawk, guys. Hobby Squawk is where we have a whole thread now, a whole forum section dedicated to boats. If you want to, if you want a specific boat to eventually be introduced to this lineup, you got to go there and let us know. That's where our product team is. Um, they're in there. They're watching the, what the customers have to say about all of them. And also, you're going to get help from the community. The boating community is going to start finding Hobby Squawk, we hope. And those guys are going to be in there and hopefully uh, taking these for their paces like we will uh, when we get them outside. But that'll about do it, guys. If you have any questions or at all, please. Don't hesitate to drop a comment on the YouTube channel uh, video link. Again, if you want to see these things driving around, as a point of filming this, we haven't gotten them out yet because we just took them out of the box, but it, once that video is done with us uh, taking them out to a lake near us, I'll drop the, the link in the description. So if it's not there yet, that means it's coming soon. But if it is there, go check it out. These things look super fast from what I've seen, and I'm excited to go rip up the lake. Uh, around here. One last parting word though regarding any boats, whether you drive them in lake water, ocean water, or chlorinated pool, if you got a big enough pool for a boat like this, I doubt it. But you know, if you take them in there, always rinse them off. You always want to look through, make sure you rinse off, especially the metal bits. You don't want to leave uh, metal just like anything else with salt water on it because it'll start to corrode and it won't look good. And even plastic over time will start to corrode, especially with salt water. But uh, anything, you always want to rinse off your stuff, uh, especially a boat when you're done playing for the day. So guys, that'll do it for me. Thank Alex for filming. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like if you can on your way out the door. As I said, leave a comment. And as always, guys, stay tuned for more coming from Bancroft, more coming from cars, tanks, boats, airplanes. This channel is going to have it all uh, as the year goes on into next year. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next time at Motion RC.